On the night of August 26, star Vicky Zhao was suddenly banned from the entire internet by the Chinese Communist Party or CCP. Authorities shelved many of her starring roles and deleted her name and works from film and television websites. At the same time, several fan groups of well-known star Zanilia Zhao were suspended, Taiwanese actress Ruby Lin's studio was deregistered, and Zheng Xuan was fined RMB 299 million for tax evasion. These stories, among other things, stormed onto mainland China's hot search list one after another. From August 27th to 28th, China's Internet Information Office, the website of the Central Commission for Discipline, Inspection, and State Supervision, and major official media outlets, published articles criticizing the incessant negative press in the entertainment industry. They said that celebrities should not step on the red line, otherwise their acting career would be over. China's General Administration of Radio, Film, and Television, or SARFT has also informed several government agencies of entertainers with poor track records and asked them to investigate and purge the list. At the same time, China's social media, Weibo, and major film and television websites have been removing the content of some artists. All Chinese people can feel that a major crackdown on the Chinese entertainment industry is coming. Some sources reveal that more Chinese entertainers will be gone in the near future, so it can be said that it's useless to be famous. The biggest names are yet to come. It's very easy for the CCP to clean up the entertainment industry. China's entertainment stars have been brought up in the CCP's party culture and are rather unrestrained in their personal lives. For example, sex and drug abuse are common, as well as shady contracts, tax evasion, and business dealings. It can be said that all the celebrities in China's massive show business have some sort of dirt in the hands of the CCP. The CCP can leave them alone, or play the role of the do-gooder and crack down on the so-called unscrupulous artists when necessary in order to curb the celebrity's influence and power in society. However, what is the reason for this sudden crackdown on the entertainment industry? What is the purpose? On August 31st, the CCP's official media, China Discipline, Inspection, and Supervision Daily, published an article titled, Cutting Off the Capital Chain Behind the Chaos in the Entertainment Industry, which featured an interview with a researcher from the macro department of the State Council Development Research Center of China. When the reporter asked, recently, the State Administration of Market Supervision carried out investigation work on the acquisition of Mobay by Meituan for failing to declare it according to the law. Previously, there have been companies such as Alibaba Group fined or investigated. What kind of signals are being released? Jiang replied, the bottom line is that one cannot interfere with the direction of socialist development with Chinese characteristics manipulate the people's livelihood in the country, harm national interests, let alone seek improper political benefits. Note the last phrase, seeking improper political benefits. That is to say, behind the Chinese entertainment industry is a huge financial circle. And behind the huge financial capital is a complex struggle between several major factions within the CCP. On January 23, 2021, China's news agency Xinhua said in its top headline, Some corrupt elements have formed interest groups in a vain attempt to steal power from the party and the state. Even though the CCP is reluctant to disclose the divisions and conflicts among the top echelons to the public, these official media releases have shown that the Xi Jinping regime has been facing a powerful opponent that could potentially subvert his power. This opponent is Jiang Zemin, the former CCP leader who rose to the top on the blood of the June 4th victims of the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre. Jiang's group has effectively ruled China for more than 20 years, and his successor wept in public as he stepped down. The Chinese president and premier had no real power during their 10 years in office and suffered humiliation by Jiang's group. Jiang Zemin and his group initiated the brutal persecution of Falun Gong 
a peaceful and spiritual group in China in 1999. As early as June 2005, 35 lawyers from around the world formed a global legal team for the public trial of Jiang's group, filing 16 lawsuits against him in 15 countries and regions. If Jiang's group loses power, it is likely to face trials both in China and internationally. Therefore, after Xi became the new party leader, Jiang's group has never given up its effort to regain power. It is an almost open secret that the Ant Group is controlled by Boyu Capital, a Chinese private equity fund founded by Jiang's grandson. The question now is, who is following the lead of Jiang's group? In an interview with the overseas media outlet The Epoch Times, a mainland media professional and filmmaker said that many Chinese actors and actresses set up studios while still attending film schools. These studios would have some second-generation group of an influential Communist Party member or a wealthy businessman behind them as they were growing. These studios can be used to launder money, and people in politics need it more than those in business, as there is no way to account for the origin of every dollar of a politician's fortune. When these politicians receive all kinds of favors, they eventually have to find a way to launder it through various channels. He said that the trend started during Jiang's rule of China. Jiang said, have the second and third generation of the Red families control all these media people in movies and TV. It is good to do so. It is beneficial to us. From that time on, almost all of the Beijing political and business tycoons with even the slightest background and the second or third generation of those powerful and wealthy have an artist studio in their hands and some of them have expanded into entertainment companies. Jiang's close partner is Zhang Qinghong, who headed Hong Kong and Macau since 2003. His brother has been controlling the entertainment industry in Beijing, Hong Kong and Macau for more than 20 years behind the scenes. <laughs> Vicky Zhao, a well-known Chinese actress and director, whom this entertainment storm has hit the hardest, has been deeply involved with Jiang and Zheng's group of officials and with Ali Group boss Jack Ma's social and capital circles. For the past two or three decades, the CCP has been somewhat supportive of the development of stars and entertainers in the entertainment industry. Even those stars whom the CCP has now classified as unscrupulous artists have sung the praises of the CCP on various occasions or appeared in films that glorify the party, such as Founding of the Republic and Building the Party. These films have brainwashed the public by distorting history and glorifying the CCP. Under the tight control of the CCP, the new generation of young people has very little spiritual space and an almost vacuum of faith. China's entertainment stars fill these gaps. Their influence is growing and their fan base is growing by the tens of millions. Young and even underaged fans have reached a state of insanity and even worshipped their idols as gods. They call their favorite male or female celebrities as god and goddess respectively. The huge influence of celebrities on their fans is reflected in many areas of society. Some children from low-income families have plunged their families into even greater poverty because of their celebrity crushes. The media in mainland China reported that a teenager stole the family's only savings of RMB 140000 or USD $21,000 from his mother's account and gave it to an online celebrity. Another 11-year-old spent RMB 400,000 or USD 62,000 dollars from his family's house sale on online games and tipping online celebrities. A special survey conducted by China Youth Daily in May 2021 shows that among 1,616 young people aged 14 to 35, 52.8 percent spent more than RMB 100 per month on celebrity hunting. 7.4% spent RMB 500 to 1,000 
per month and 2.2% spent more than 1,000 RMB or USD $155 per month. 2.7% of the young people surveyed confessed that they spent on starstruck pursuits by borrowing or taking out loans. The third factor is that the recent regulatory storm launched by the CCP has been directed at squeezing the service sector and bailing out the manufacturing sector. China's manufacturing base has an increasingly difficult time finding young workers. There are several reasons for this. One of them is the philosophy among young Chinese. This generation of Chinese does not want to be bound by the strict management of factories. They seek freedom and diversity in their lifestyles and would rather work as a food delivery worker than in a factory. It is hard to imagine that young people who have grown up with entertainment and games will follow the party's call to join the factories and become hard-working and enduring workers. In fact, the philosophy of lying flat with less material needs and less work has become popular among young people in China. At the extreme end of the spectrum are the so-called Sanhe masters. Sanhe is the abbreviation of Shenzhen, Sanhe Talent Market. This group believes in the lifestyle of working for one day and playing for three days. They only work for a daily paycheck, sell their ID cards for 100 RMB, eat noodles at 4 RMB a bowl every day, spend most of their time in illegal internet cafes at 5 RMB a night, or sleep on the streets if they don't have money. The fourth factor, the Chinese government's fiscal constraints, is a problem we have also analyzed in previous episodes. In the past few years, China's economy has been hit by the 2020 pandemic and the resurgence in 2021. The dramatic changes in Sino-US relations have led to more severe sanctions and blockades in all aspects of economic development. But the CCP's spending is still huge. Domestically, it needs large sums of money to maintain so-called social stability, and internationally, it needs to export huge sums of money to maintain its international appearance as well as its dominance and influence. To extract from the huge wealth of the entertainment industry is just an inevitability. This time, the star Zhang Shuang, who was fined 299 million RMB, or roughly USD 46 million dollars, how much does she get paid for a day? Her ex-boyfriend and agent revealed that she could make 160 million RMB, or USD 25 million dollars, for one show working only 77 days, which means she was paid a whopping 2.08 million RMB or USD $320,000 a day. On August 17, 2021, the CCP once again proposed that shared prosperity is the essential requirement of socialism at an important meeting. As a result, the CCP's official media have been publishing reports exploring how to achieve shared prosperity. On August 29th, more than 30 official media outlets at the central and provincial levels, including People's Daily, Xinhua News Agency, and People's Liberation Army Daily, reposted an article from WeChat in a rare and prominent position. The title of the article is, Everyone Can Feel It, A Profound Change Is Underway. The article says China's entertainment industry is rotten, the United States is imposing increasingly severe military threats, economic and technological blockades, financial crackdowns, political and diplomatic sieges on China. Rectifying the entertainment industry is to return from the capitalist group to the masses of the people, to return to the essence of socialism. The shared prosperity is to enable ordinary workers to receive more income in the distribution of social wealth. The current efforts to regulate the entertainment, arts, and culture, and film circles are still far from adequate. There is no doubt that the entertainment industry in China is a stepping stone in the path to the so-called shared prosperity.